It is the summer of 1609, when Galileo Galilei makes a startling discovery. If two different lenses are held at just the right distance, they produce a surprising optical effect. This is the birth of the telescope. They act like a magnifying glass for distant objects. The weaponization of the device happened swiftly, since it was extremely useful from the view of a military standpoint. Having such a device at their disposal meant that any military could see their enemies first before they could see them, effectively turning it into a spyglass. But Galileo had a different thought in mind. He turns his telescope to the sky and starts a revolution in the making. To the naked eye, five stars appear brighter than the rest, and when seen over the course of many nights, they appear to move against the backdrop of the other stars. Sometimes only a few of them are visible, and other times all of them are. Each of them is a planet, a Greek term that means wanderer. These planets are Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn seem to outshine everything around them. We now know that these other worlds are planets, just like the Earth. But in Galileo's time, everyone believed that they are just stars, and that there is only one world in the universe, which is the Earth, that sits at the center of everything. The Sun appears to circle the Earth during the day, and over the long course of the night, the Moon and the stars appear to rotate across the heavens, circling the Earth in giant orbits. But Galileo is about to show that this is just a feeling. He starts to shake the known world order. When he looks at Jupiter, one of the wandering stars, he sees it as no one had ever seen it before. To the naked eye, Jupiter looks like a bright star, a beaming spot of light. Seen through Galileo's telescope, all other stars remain a spot of light, but Jupiter appears as a much larger round disk. This blurry, shaky view of Jupiter is a revelation. Galileo makes a remarkable discovery. Jupiter must be a sphere, a planet, as we understand it today. And around it are even more surprises. Initially, these were just a few new stars to Galileo. But as Galileo recalls the shifting positions of these new stars every night, they appear to be following Jupiter, just like ducklings following a duck. Galileo questioned himself why stars would follow a planet the size of Jupiter. However, after a week or two, he naturally realized they were moons of Jupiter, exactly like our own moon. Telescopes today reveal the solar system that Galileo could only dream of. Explosions on the surface of the Sun. On Mars, a canyon five times deeper than the Grand Canyon. Mankind driving a vehicle on the Moon. And on Venus, rains of acid beneath the clouds of sulfuric acid. Our human understanding of the solar system has expanded to the point where we have explored less of our planet's deep seas and more of its outer reaches. Humans are inquisitive in nature. We enjoy learning new things and expanding our knowledge of the unknown. But unsolved mysteries continue to exist that are yet to be solved. As an example, consider the Eye of Jupiter, also called the Great Red Spot, a storm that has been roaring for hundreds of years. Samuel Heinrich Schwab made the first recorded observation of the Great Red Spot around the year 1831. Since then, the location has drawn the attention and investigation of both professional and amateur astronomers. Yet even now, we are unable to understand what fuels it. In addition, speculations about Jupiter being formed of the same materials as the star and maybe becoming the same one day began to circulate. Many claimed that Jupiter is a failed star, meaning that it may have experienced a hiccup during its formation that prevented it from finishing the star formation process and becoming a planet instead of a star. Despite being one of our solar system's planets that had probably received the most in-depth study at the time, Jupiter nevertheless left many questions unanswered. In order to better understand the massive planet, NASA decided in 1977 to send a probe into space to take the first ever up-close and personal images of the gas giant. 
Voyager 1 and 2, the two most distant man-made spacecraft in space, left our blue home planet to search for these answers. It took a little over 546 days, or over 1.5 years to get there. Voyager found that Jupiter's atmosphere is more dynamic than previously thought. The mission also captured images of the moons, Analthea, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, providing humanity with the first ever details of their terrain. But possibly the most stunning of Voyager 1's discoveries was that Io has highly active volcanoes, powered by heat generated by the stretching and relaxing the moon endures every 42 hours, as its elliptical orbit brings it closer to and then farther from Jupiter. The planet became the second planet known to have rings when the spacecraft also found a small ring surrounding it. In addition to this, Voyager made several observations and returned a large number of photos to Earth. Voyager 1 continued its trek into interstellar space after visiting Jupiter. But, the information gathered at that time brought our understanding of the mighty Jupiter to a whole new level. After the departure of Voyager into the interstellar, NASA used the Hubble telescope to take numerous pictures of the storm in order to improve our understanding of the enormous red spot. Hubble observed that its size was constantly shrinking. The area can only accommodate one Earth today, down from three when it was first discovered. So what is going on with the storm? Is it finally disappearing after hundreds of years? To answer this new set of questions, NASA needed to send some more probes to this giant. Several NASA spacecraft visited the gas giant over the course of several years in the future. The most notable being Juno. Juno was launched on 5 August 2011 from Cape Canaveral, Florida. NASA dubbed the spacecraft Juno after the mythical deity Jupiter who would hide behind clouds. However, his wife, the goddess Juno could see right through them. About five years later in 2016, it reached Jupiter. Its primary objectives, to investigate why Jupiter became a planet instead of a star and the enigma behind the shrinking of the red storm. Although Juno's initial mission ended in July 2021, it has been given an extended mission that will end in 2025. So how did Jupiter come to be? According to research, gravity drew spinning gas and dust in to form Jupiter when the rest of the solar system formed some 4.5 billion years ago. The majority of the mass that was left over after the Sun formed was taken up by Jupiter which now contains more than twice as much material as the other worlds put together in the solar system. This shows that although Jupiter possesses all the necessary components for a star, it did not get large enough to ignite. About 4 billion years ago, Jupiter settled into its current position in the outer solar system, where it is the fifth planet from the Sun. Jupiter's enormous gravitational force has since protected Earth and several other worlds from numerous asteroid strikes. Jupiter is 318 times heavier and 1300 times larger in volume than Earth. In fact, Jupiter is so big that it would still be two and a half times as big even if the masses of all the other planets in the solar system were united into one super planet. Juno also made a close pass to the Jovian moons in addition to the planet itself. Juno recently reached Europa and took some of the ice-covered surface's highest resolution photographs. The picture you are viewing right now was just made public by NASA. On September 29, 2022, the spacecraft traveled within 219 miles or 352 kilometers of Europa, and the Juno cam on board the probe captured images of Europa's ice-covered surface. In addition to these breathtaking visuals, Juno's microphone also recorded some audio not only does Jupiter's own voice appear in these recordings, but also of the largest Jovian moon, Ganymede. Besides the scientific community, NASA itself was interested in the audio. In this video, we'll talk about two of Juno's most popular sounds. The first is captured when Juno enters Jupiter's orbit.
This eerie sound is dubbed as the roar of Jupiter. The audio is a little distant and creepy, as you kind of expect from anything in space. The sound is actually the bell shock that the spacecraft experiences when it enters the planet's magnetic field, which shields it from solar winds. A bow shock is created when supersonic solar winds are abruptly slowed down and heated as they slam into the magnetosphere of a gas giant. This is analogous to the sonic boom that occurs when an airplane exceeds the Earth's sound barrier. A shockwave is created when compression waves merge. Jupiter being the largest planet in the solar system, has an incredibly large magnetosphere around it. In fact, the magnetosphere is so large that it's the largest structure in the solar system. It would be twice as big as the full moon from Earth if it could illuminate in the visible spectrum. At the planet's poles, these magnetic fields also produce some of the solar system's most breathtaking auroras. Therefore, it is understandable why the unsettling recording played on NASA's headphones for more than two hours. The second sound was recorded on Ganymede, the largest Jovian moon. Ganymede, also the largest moon in our solar system, is so big that it has its own unique magnetosphere and could have been mistaken for a planet if it had its own orbit. To put things in perspective, Ganymede has a diameter that is 400 kilometers bigger than that of Mercury. The 50-second clip shows a sudden change in the probe's activity when it approached a different region of Ganymede's magnetosphere, probably as it transitioned from the night side to the day side. The sound of the moon is audible to humans only because scientists shifted the electric and magnetic frequencies into the audible range. If you pay great attention, you can hear a sudden shift to higher frequencies near the recording's halfway point, which denotes entry into a new section of Ganymede's magnetosphere. To record these noises, Juno descended as close to the moon's surface as 1,038 kilometers or 645 miles. If you could go to Ganymede yourself, you wouldn't hear these sounds. They serve as a reminder that even seemingly lifeless landscapes frequently hum with activity that can be picked up with the correct tools. What are your thoughts on this? What do you think about the enigmas of Jupiter? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know what you think. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope you really liked it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you liked the video. And as always, thanks for watching.